Today's video is gonna be one about where I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of two setups to put in your baby corn snake or baby colubrid, really any North American colubrid, rat snake, corn snake, whatever, or even king snake or milk snake would do very well in this type of setup. So with that being said, I just wanna talk about how it's gonna be essentially a comparison of a more naturalistic looking one where it's gonna be a little bit more cluttered, different type of set, like a different type of substrate, um, something that would seem more akin to getting closer and closer towards naturalistic and bioactive enclosures. And then the other one is gonna be more of a traditional setup. So one that more than likely would, you would look at from someone who was very first getting into it, um, that would get a lot of their stuff from like a brick and mortar pet store, or reptile store, or their very first uh, reptile expo. So that way I can show you two side-by-side -side comparisons of a good way to set up your baby or subadult colubrid Again, this is not going to be its adult enclosure. You'd need a much larger one. This is going to be a side-by-side -side comparison of subadult to baby corn snakes, because that's what I'm going to use, um, or colubrid setups to eventually go bigger and better for when they're adults. But for now, this is just, I think, a good way to compare two different ways that you can do it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Start. Here is the naturalistic. Over here will be the more traditional. Um, I realize it's kind of silly with the little styrofoam background in the back for the more uh, naturalistic setup versus the other one that just has that piece of uh, fake background wood that looks a little bit more natural. Uh, but whatever, I digress. Um, I didn't really bother to pull that out, but it's okay. It'll still look fairly naturalistic in the end. Um, or I could potentially just like pull that out one day in the road. But this is just for uh, examples of how we can do things. But I digress. So to start things off, we're going to start with the basics. So keeping in mind, these are, again are both for uh, baby to juvenile corn snakes. So these are small subadult colubrids. These will not be their permanent residence. Um, so these are 24 by 12 by 18 exoterras. So this is a good size for your uh, small subadult corn snake or baby. So basics. We have the actual enclosure itself. We have the different substrates. The naturalistic is a mix of sphagnum moss, play sand, exoterra brand sand, uh, and organic uh, topsoil, and a little bit of cypress mulch. And then over here we have commercial uh, Zoomed Aspen bedding. And then when we talk about the other things that we're going to need, so we got to think about heating and we got to think about lighting. So lighting, if we look there, we have awesome uh, little UVB lights. We have the T5 uh, UV lights for here and for here on a 12 hour timer. So 12 hours will be on, 12 hours it'll be off. Um, and then in the winter, I dial the back down to about nine to 10 hours on and then the remaining off. And then we think about heat. Um, I run a flex watt attached to a thermostat. You don't necessarily have to use flex watt tape. You can use something like this Exoterra little heat pad. Again, hooked up to a thermostat like this uh, VE300. Um, this is not the one that it's hooked up to, it's actually hooked up to a 200. But uh, uh, Vivarium Electronics or VE is one of the preferred brands of thermostats and I recommend that regardless of what heating element you choose to use, be it flex watt, heat pads, whatever, that you do in fact use a thermostat to help regulate that and prevent any sort of fires. So we're gonna get right into building and working with these things. Um, we have quite a few different things that we're going to do. So as I said before, um, we're going to have a couple different setups. So the very first thing is we're going to put the water dishes in. So the water dishes, and I'm aware that, that we're going for this more naturalistic setup, but I like to use these dishwasher safe water dishes even for my more naturalistic setups because honestly they're great. Uh, they're very good to be interchanged out. They're very good dishwasher safe. They're really good to be able to keep track to make sure if anything's going on. So we're gonna, I usually like to put that kind of right there in the center. So for that one, and then over here, we're gonna put this one over here. Okay, cool. So there's our water dishes. And from then, we're going to move on to the different hides and branches and climbing trees, right? So we have all sorts of different things that we're going to use for this video. Now, the first thing is we're gonna stick with the hides. So the hides, we have a couple different options for those things. So we have, for the more naturalistic one, we have pieces of cork bark like this. Uh, we have the half hollow uh, tubes like this, which I might also put in the traditional one, um, as well as these guys. Um, so this one is the natural wood. This one is actually plastic and artificial. So this one will actually go into 
the other one. And then we have these guys, my little homemade ones, that are these very inexpensive bulbs, uh, bowls that I use a soldering iron or pen to cut out uh, the little cavity, and this will be used for bowls. These guys are also dishwasher safe. They work very well. So we're gonna start with the naturalistic one. So when we think naturalistic, we think about where these animals are being found in the wild, right? So we have to think that a lot of times they're found in caves, under rocks, under logs. So just for the time being, we might move some stuff around, that's okay. We're gonna throw some cork bark in there like that, as well as this guy kind of in this corner right here, like that. So the, and then I'll put a little bit of sphagnum moss under there. And then over here, we're gonna come over here because this is the more traditional one. We're gonna put this little guy right there. So remember that snakes in general, and this is where a lot of misconceptions come from, is that people think that snakes need to feel confined. That's why they do best in tiny little uh, tubs and enclosures. And that's just not the case. They like to feel secure and hidden and being able to expose themselves when in fact they want to. And all of that comes in part of feeling secure as well as natural behaviors and characteristics that they in fact will display even in captivity. So to be able to, to provide the best for that that we can, we're going to provide multiple hides for them. So right now where I have the heat, it is in the back. So right now the heat strip it runs along the back, runs along the back. So that'll be the warm part. So we have one on the cool, one kind of in the middle, one in the back, cool, middle, back. So there we go. We're covering at least a couple things. And as we said, we're going to uh, move some stuff around. Next, we're going to talk about climbing branches and rocks and things for them to climb on, under, rub against if they're shedding and all sorts of things for them to interact with in their enclosure. So here we have a really good selection. We have here, this is choya wood, which is dried out dead pieces of cactus. Um, it's really cool that it happens with the cactus as it uh, dries out and dies. All the fleshy bits that retain the water die out and then it's left this really, really cool husk. Looks really good in a lot of arid uh, enclosures and there are cactus founds in parts of the corn snake range. So we have this uh, for example that we can use. Over here we have several different types of rock. Um, I'm probably not going to use this because it's a little sharp. Um, flat pieces, round pieces, pieces with a bit of an N, big flat ones like that. This is a commercial looking one, a little half lug. Um, you can see it's made of plastic. This will work really well. And then we have some other pieces of wood. Um, these are branches that I have cut, uh, scraped off the bark and uh, bleached and baked. So that way these guys are nice and sterile to this use. This is our big, my big bucket of decorative plants. So these are all the artificial plants. A lot of these can be washed and scrubbed down. Some of them, uh, not as much like these guys from the Dollar Tree, which are very inexpensive and they will last a little while. But once they kind of get pooped on, you end up having to essentially pluck off leaves until you're left with nothing but the little plastic vine. Um, but still inexpensive, so that's just kind of dealer's choice. And we have all sorts, all sorts of different ones that we can use for this. So we're gonna have some fun decorating these guys out. Okay, we're gonna start with the more traditional setup. So to start things off with, we have the little piece of wood, the little branch that I have, and then I wrapped up one of the little branches around here to secure it onto there. So we'll just kind of prop it up here in the corner, just like that. Sorry about that, doing this POV style. So we'll just kind of prop that up in the corner right there. Then we'll have this other little, this long piece of choya wood. We'll see if we can kind of just have that in there like that. So there we go. Let's put a couple rocks in here, shall we? So we'll put a little rock right there. I'll put another rock. Actually here, here's an idea. Let's do this, let's do this. I'm doing this one handed, so you're gonna have to forgive me a little bit. So there we go. A little rock right there to kind of help secure that down. That looks pretty good. What do you think so far? All right, we'll keep on going. We'll do, 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 do. We'll do this guy. This really cool piece right here. A little more of a little artificial plant. Let's take this really cool rose. Stick that right there. Looking pretty good so far. What do you think, guys? Let's do maybe another piece of choya wood. Do another piece of choy wood, kind of like that. Um, I was going to use one of those like fake bamboo uh, branches that like suction cups across, but I didn't really like that. Um, there are ways so that way we can kind of sit there and make it look like it'll be uh, like you can use it with like PVC and magnets and stuff. But I just I wasn't really feeling that one, unfortunately. But that's okay. We can keep on going, chugging along. Put another little uh, another little fake plant there. 
And we have maybe this guy over here. There we go. So now the other thing to remember is we want to give them variety and variability of stuff that's going to be in here. So this we have, it's a little bit more stiff. These leaves feel a little bit really soft. I should tuck that down there. The rocks, they have different textures right there, right here. Let's put this one in the back kind of like that and they can also get back there if they wanted to. It provides an extra little hide. This is a different texture to it. Choy wood, this branch, this really kind of stiff thing right here with leaves going up there. I think it's looking pretty good. The big thing is with the light, we want to be able to provide them plenty of places to escape the light and feel secure if they want. And then lots of places for them to climb and explore when they are feeling comfortable when they come on out, when they want to come out when they so wish. So this big branch allows them to kind of climb up and bask. This is a really nice little place for them to bask. Actually, let's do this. Let's put instead this kind of rock right there. So that'll be on the heat. So right there, this will be the warm spot. So that will essentially act as a basking rock. And then we'll throw another little rock there in the back. Um, that'll act as a little basking spot. So that way it can get a little bit of cryptic basking. So that way it's a little bit protected from uh, the direct UVB light right there where it's nice and warm, and then it can immediately go back under this hide, or if it wants to choose one of those other hides right there. So, and then we will do one more of, let's do, let's move that, let's do that. There we go. So this is what we talk about when we say clutter. So this cage is filled with all sorts of different things. And then we, even once we introduce our snake and he gets settled, um, he will actually end up usually picking one of a couple different spots where they'll usually hide, uh, where we will usually find them. And that's actually the case a lot of times uh, with wild snakes, where um, herpers will go back to the same spots year after year, and they will find the same animals in very close to, if not the exact same location they found, because their little microhabitats work very well for them. So here we go. Here's the more traditional setup with the aspen bedding, the commercial bedding, um, the more commercial bowls and hides that we use for that as well um, as the commercial hides and little decor like that. Um, now that, that being said, we're doing traditional versus naturalistic. So we're not talking about bioactive now, which honestly I think is what the next step would be. But to be completely honest with everyone, my full grasp of bioactive isn't nearly as strong as other people's. And I look very, uh, I look very much forward to to working with some different bioactive people. That way I can learn more and create better bioactive enclosures for some of my animals. But this is just a video to talk about showing of the different ways that we can do things. So that way, even though they may not necessarily be the best things or the you know, top, top tier, this is something that anyone could look in and say, wow, this is a great enclosure. You're giving plenty of opportunities for your animals. So with that being said, this one is done. We're going to go do the naturalistic one. Then we're going to grab some water to fill up the bowls and put our snakes into the enclosures. All right, now we'll do the naturalistic one. And I actually found a nice little kind of perch that I can use to kind of prop this up. Uh, that way I can use both hands for the camera. So we're going to start with a nice big overhanging thing and then a big basking rock, just like the other one did for the more uh, traditional setup. Now in this one, I'm using not only this big rock as what's gonna act as a basking place, that way it can be very cryptid, both under, diluted under this big uh, leafy fake plant, as well as it can be entirely exposed here if it so chooses, but it also helps weigh this down. So that'll be really nice. We're gonna prop that up just a little bit like that. And then we're gonna get some branches into here, some other rocks. So again, just like in the traditional one and just like this one, we're gonna use rocks to kind of help weigh it down. And the big thing about a lot of this is that all of this can be very interchangeable. That way we can change up how this enclosure looks. That way we can, you know, every so often, every couple weeks, every month or so, when we do with the full substrate change, we can entirely switch everything around, move everything around, interchange out some of the different plants. Um, so that way we can keep it nice and fresh for our animals. So here, we're gonna take this really big, long thing here, and we're gonna wrap it around here. So again, this is, we're talking about that clutter that we said on uh, the traditional setup. This is just a little bit different. So this is what's gonna 
it's gonna kind of really occupy and fill out the space. And then we're gonna take some other things like this that we would find kind of around on the ground, different pieces of branches and leaf litter on the ground. And unfortunately, I don't have any leaf litter. That would have been probably a much better thing to do when we talk about naturalistic is having some leaf litter, a layer of leaf litter for them to feel secure under. But that's why what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some of these big leafier ones and we're gonna fill that. So the thing about the aspen bedding is it works very well. It's very sanitary. It's very, it's almost sterile in a way. And it, it's very loose, which allows them to kind of build their own burrows. This soil, they can build burrows in, but snakes as a whole usually don't burrow through this type of soil unless there's already a burrow already made, even though it's nice and loose and pretty lightweight as well. So essentially what we're doing with this, all of this extra little stuff here with these hides, with all these extra little pieces of leaf and, and fake plant, this is essentially acting as an artificial leaf litter layer. So that way in the traditional one with the aspen bedding, they can burrow in and feel secure as well as use the different hides. This one, they can also use all this leaf litter and things in the background as well. Now, another little thing I'm gonna do for the naturalistic one, which I probably should have done to begin with, is I'm gonna have a really cool layer of moss over here. So we're actually gonna move this a little bit and we're gonna take this moss and I'm gonna have this really nice little thing of Spanish moss right here. And we're gonna spray that down under the lact. They can get up under that. So just kind of like so. Like that. So that way they can get under that. That acts as a really cool kind of different feel for them to cruise and move around on. Let's see, let's put a couple more rocks in here. Let's see, let's do, you know what? We don't have any really flowers in here. Let's put, let's put something with a little bit of, a little bit more color in here as well. There we go. So there, there's that nice little thing right there. So this is now a very nice, cluttered, more naturalistic. And I'm aware this obviously isn't something that you would see with, you know, different ivies and maples and all the other different flowers in here. But this acts as essentially very similar things to where we have a substrate, a substrate, heat, lighting, water, in both of these different ones, and actually I'm gonna pick this up again and move around, so here. So we have, just like we said before, hides, different things for them to climb on, different things for them to interact with, water, a substrate that allows them to burrow. Over here we have a very cluttered one that allows them to feel secure whenever they so choose as well. So that way, this is kind of what we're looking at when we have a more traditional one with more, more commercial things, and not to say that the other one isn't commercial, but this is something that a lot of people would look like when they go to their first uh, you know, reptile expo or brick and mortar specialty shop, where they're gonna pick up their Exoterra enclosure and their Zoomed Aspen bedding and their Zoomed um, and Exoterra brand um, hides and things. And then if they wanna be a little bit more um, Trojan and economic about it, they can buy these very inexpensive like Dollar Tree bowls that they can use as hides as well, plus like the different Dollar Tree and uh, brick and mortar Zoomed uh, plants and things, as well as a couple different climbing branches. Unfortunately, I didn't have a really nice artificial branch, but I believe the point has been made a little bit. Plus nice clean and sterilized rocks they can use for shedding and hiding and things like that. Um, and again, we also have uh, spat, uh, some sphagnum moss that we can use. I'm actually going to, uh, I'm gonna put that down, but I'm gonna put sphagnum moss under this one. Unfortunately, I'm using the POV thing, so we're going to put sphagnum moss there, and we're going to put some sphagnum moss under this hide right here. So, let me zoom in a little bit right here. So here is the more naturalistic one, the very cluttered one, one that I personally think is probably a little bit better for that. And then over here, forgive me, it's a really bad reflection if I keep the doors closed, so I'm going to keep banging into these. And this is the more traditional one. There's nothing wrong with either of these, and honestly, this is a whole lot better than probably what most people have the initial idea of because we really wanna give them lots of things to get uh, cluttered and to feel very secure. And so we're gonna add some water. We're gonna put our snakes in here. Okay, so for the cluttered naturalistic one, we're gonna put our little Okatee corn snake in here. So we're gonna put him in there and let him do his little thing. So these are both little baby corn snakes. As you can see, he's only about a year old. Very small, These, this is not gonna be his permanent enclosure. This is gonna be the enclosure for maybe the next year or two until he gets a little bit larger, then he'll move to at least a three foot enclosure um, or a very large tub. 
uh, that we've talked about in the past about doing uh, much better, essentially doing this with our tub enclosures as well. So we're gonna let him kind of settle in and then we'll gonna kind of check on him again after we introduce our uh, other corn snake, the Tessera, to the other enclosure. Let's see. All right, and now we've put the Tessera, who didn't, wouldn't want to stop biting me, so I just had to kind of plop him in here. Um, so here he is, the cute little uh, caramel Tessera. Um, he's actually, I don't know if he is caramel. I have to put that down. He said, I know, it, I know it's not caramel. I don't know why I said that. He's, uh, he's another type of Tessera. I have it written down. Any corn snake people there want to yell at me, but I know what he is. I just, for whatever reason, I've entirely forgotten their spaced at the moment. But here he is in the really cool little traditional one. He's going to check things out. So this will be his full enclosure. And I'm going to bet now that he's going to spend a lot of time under this hide and under this hide and then come winter he'll be in there a lot when the heat kicks on because right now the heat doesn't really kick on a whole lot except for at night and in the early mornings uh, because of how warm it is now that it's the middle of summer but i'm gonna bet that's where he's gonna spend a lot of his time then we're gonna zoom back over here check out our little okatee or abbott's okatee so here, this one's gonna be a little bit more interesting. And honestly, this is uh, like when my partner feeds, uh, she gets really mad at me when I have these really cluttered ones because sometimes um, it takes a while for them to figure out where they're gonna be all the time. But for those of you who were concerned, uh, the holdouts, I should say, that think that um, the, you know a snake this small with this many hiding places or even just this large and in this more sparse, although this is certainly not sparse, um, think that they won't eat, uh, allow me to sh give you an example. So here, which I've now had to refresh a couple different times, but it seems to be working very well. Um, the Transpecos rat snake, so he's right above here, and that's kind of how I have this little setup right here, this little kind of four thing right here. This is the Transpecos rat snake, and he actually spends a lot of his time in this little tube. There we go, there he is. Um, and when he is hungry, and at night, I know when he's hungry because he'll kind of sit there and he'll stick his little his little head right out of here. And then when he's in shed, he'll go over here into the more humid hide that I have over here with that sphagnum moss you can kind of see poking out right there. And that's when he'll usually go to shed. And then he likes to entirely wrap his bowl. And as you can see, he actually shed that. Um, and my partner tried to peel that off. So I'm gonna actually have to sit there and like scrub that bowl and pull that off there. But with that being said, here these guys are. I think this turned out really well. Actually, I really like this setup right here. I know it's super cluttered, but this is actually really cool. And when I say naturalistic, this realistically is something where you would find a snake amongst a lot of leaf litter, amongst a lot of rocks and fallen branches and things. That's where you would find a corn snake in the wild or a lot of different North American rat snakes. You'll find, uh, and colubrids in general, you will find animals in conditions very similar to this. So I actually really, I personally prefer this kind of a setup. This looks really cool. It looks really amazing. He does, he will end up kind of blending in a little bit with that coloration, but he looks really, really nice in here. I really like how that turned out. Um, and then over here, our little Tessera, he's still hanging out under there. Uh, but there's, again, this is the more like traditional commercial setup that you would see most of the time. So I think this both looks very good. Um, oh, our little corn snake. He's trying to escape here. I'm going to shut the shut this one so that way he doesn't get out. But with that being said, there he is. Nope. 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 There you go. There you go, little guy. So there he is. I think these turned out pretty well in general. So if anyone has any thoughts, concerns, I'm aware that no matter how I set up an enclosure, it's never going to be perfect for everybody. And again, I'm not telling anyone that this is the way to do it. I'm just giving examples in this video as well as all of my other ones of ways that it can be done. And obviously every single one of these things will end up being changed depending on your room, where you live, the humidity, the heat, whether you're, if you're in a very cold climate where the heater kicks on and dries it out in the winter, all sorts of different things can affect how you set it up. This is just how in a place that I have where it's fairly arid, very warm in the winter, very cold, or very warm in the summer, very cold in the winter, how I do that with the thermostat, with the heat, um, the UV light on the timer, plenty of places to hide, plenty of sphagnum moss, plenty of places to climb, plenty of places to hide. 
all sorts of different ways with several different substrate choices can work. And I'm going to, you little bugger, come on, come on. We're going to close you up actually. Now that we're finishing up, wrapping up the video and you're going to try to go exploring. But that being said, this is how this video turned out. I think it turned out really well. Again, if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, I understand that I'm not going to make everybody happy, but that's okay. These are just ways that again, can be done. Um, I plan on doing plenty of more reptile content, um, as well as a lot of, I'm going to continue to do content about how not necessarily the best way or the only way, but ways that we can improve our regular husbandry practices and taking baby steps toward improving our husbandry and growing our hobby moving forward. Hope everyone enjoyed this video. Hope everyone is having a great day and we will check you next time.